Joseph Wall makes history. As well as the Leafs make a couple of huge moves today. We'll break all this down for you coming up on this episode of Hattrick HQ. But with that said, we're proud to announce our first ever sponsor on the channel. And that is Rentals.ca. The NHL season is back. And we are coming into the year with new stars, new potential generational prospects, and a whole new excitement as fans of the NHL. If you feel like you want the same sort of excitement in your own life, it's time to move for you as well and it's never been easier than with rentals.ca rentals.ca is canada's largest apartment hunting network you can rent apartments houses and condos all across the country from coast to coast my favorite thing about the website is it's super clean and easy to use you can pinpoint exactly on the map where you want to rent your next house yeah, Mark, and a couple of us, a couple of our buddies have actually used Rentals.ca in finding their own apartments, their own houses. So if you're out there searching for your own apartment, search for, for a house, make sure to check out Rentals.ca. They'll get you sorted. But with that said, let's get right into the first topic of the video today, and that is Minton gets sent back to Kamloops. And Mark, this is a thing that we've kind of covered uh, for a bit, but it actually happened today. Leafs P PR put out that Fraser Minton has been reassigned to the Kamloops Blazer. Obviously, Fraser Minton was on the, one of those kind of hero story arcs coming out of the preseason. Uh, he, Sheldon Keith was really high on this guy in the preseason. He did play really well in the games he did get in in the regular season. But just with this Leafs lineup, it's hard to crack and hard to stay there. Yeah, that's the big thing. I don't think this is a thing where they looked at Minton and say, hey, you weren't good enough. I think it was just a situation of Kempf did end up moving up to the third line. They kind of started gelling with Domi and Nyes down there. So I think the biggest problem was they didn't want to really bury this guy in the fourth line, get him 10 minutes a game. Why kind of halter his uh, development in this process of just playing him down there when you could send him back to the WHL he's going to be dominant there we've seen it previously and I think this guy it's a situation to look at as well that next year is going to be huge for him as well he has the taste for the NHL we've talked about this before he didn't look like he didn't fit in the NHL it was just bad timing with a couple players not really working out well together so you send him down you develop him I think next year is going to be a huge year for Minton I think it's a name we have to keep an eye on because honestly he's jumping up these prospect charts for me so much and i think even just as early as next year that he will be a bona fide middle six guy for the leafs and it's just incredible to watch his development and the future so bright for a guy like this yeah we kind of seen this coming with him being a healthy scratch the last couple of games but like we said here like you said it's not the case where he wasn't playing good and that's why they sent him back he was playing great it's just this toronto team is really deep this year especially at the center position so it's really hard uh, to crack this lineup this guy's a great player a great prospect him and Nyes are the future of this team and like you said you don't want to halter a guy's development by keeping him there maybe getting him in every third or fourth game and he can just go back to Kamloops kind of revamp their season because I know they had a bit of a slow start so we just want to say best of luck to Fraser Minton going back to Kamloops uh, we will definitely see him next year in this opening night roster mark it down I can definitely see that happening but we're going to get into our second topic and that is Lagos and Rick called and on this tweet we just put up you might have seen this as well uh that the Maple Leafs recalled William Lagason from the Toronto Marlies and the reason that they made this move Mark is because uh Jake McCabe just went down day to day with a lower body injury but the interesting thing to me here is they have Simone Benoit there as well so maybe they just want to call this guy up test both of them out in practice and, and see which one uh, they want to go with for their next game yeah, McCabe right now is out with a lower body injury. There is no update at this time. So we're hoping it's not a severe thing. Maybe it's just a game, maybe two. But a situation where we don't want to lose this guy for an extended period of time. I think Lagutson was recalled because you look at Benoit, he didn't get a lot of time in preseason. He hasn't got into any action. At least with Benoit, he has five games played so far. In these games, he only has one assist, but he is six foot two, 211 pounds. He's a bigger guy. He looked good in preseason. He looked good in training camp. So I think I think it's just a situation of not wanting to force Benoit into a lot of playing time, maybe not in the top four, but into a situation of getting, you know, 12, 13, 14 minutes where he hasn't really got his foot in the season yet, where he hasn't played in preseason. He had a situation where he didn't get into any Leafs games or AHL games. 
Yeah, and Lagson, he's a great defender. Like you said, he had a great preseason up with Toronto. One of the guys who was kind of right there to maybe crack this roster opening night. But obviously with Benoit and Timmins, it was kind of hard for him to work his way up there. But he is here now, and we're going to take a look at his stats here. Uh, so far through five games with the Marlies, he has one point. And last year with the Chicago Wolves of the AHL, he had 32 points in 65 games. But Mark, the thing about this guy is he doesn't do the things on the stat sheet. He's a the things off the stat sheet. He goes out, he's a great defender, he's a good physical player, great defensively in his own zone, kind of the same player as Jake McCabe in my opinion, so it's kind of the perfect replacement in my opinion. Yeah, that's a big thing, and it's the situation of if, say, he doesn't work out in the first game you play him, or if Benoit does draw into the first game, you still have these two guys that you can kind of interchange until Timmons is back or until McCabe's back. So I'm not worried about this. If Timmons comes back before, say, McCabe, I think he draws into the lineup. Just say Benoit has a bad first game, you just put Legison in. So I think these guys are just going to fill out the bottom pairing, maybe push Giordano up, or maybe Klingberg does slide back up and Brody to the lefty. But overall, I wouldn't be worried about oh these guys might not be amazing because they're not going to stay on the roster for a long time but it's nice to get a glimpse of these guys see what they have and Legison could be a diamond in the rough where he comes up plays outstanding and he could slide in as their seventh D. That's right both these guys are about to get a huge opportunity so uh, they're going to want to take every bit of advantage of that so like you said I think we'll kind of see them rotate until uh, Brody get come uh, or till Brody till uh, McCabe comes back so uh, it'll be interesting to see we're excited to see some some new players get into the lineup, see what they can bring to this Toronto team. But we're going to get into our next topic of the video. Probably the reason you guys all clicked on this video. Wall is on a historic run. And obviously, Joseph Wall is the talk of the town in Toronto right now. Kind of stealing the show in, in, in terms of goaltending. But we're going to bring up here, Joseph Wall has stopped 96 of 98 shots. That's right. 96 and 98 shots in his last three games, going 3 0 0 with a 0.71 GAA and a 980 save percentage. I mean, these numbers are just unreal for kind of a rookie goaltender coming in. Uh, you know, it, he came in replacement for Sam Snap, then comes in, uh, starts last night. He's just playing an unreal game, uh, unreal game right now, and. We're just going to take a look at the top goaltenders in the league. And Joseph Wall right now is number one. In four games played, he only has five goals against. His expected goals against is 13. His goal saved above expected is 8.6. This is eight goals that this guy's robbed that probably should have went in. And he's above names such as Jeremy Swayman, Jake Ottinger, Alexander Gorgiev, who is 6-0 right now. Mark, I mean... Everybody knows here how big fans of the brick wall we are, Joseph Wall. Uh, but, I mean, this guy kind of came in and, and stole the show this year so far. Yeah, you look at him. He leads so many categories. Goals against average, save percentage. The guy looks outstanding right now. When you look at Jeremy Swayman, you look at Boston. They're undefeated. Until last night, the Stars were undefeated in regulation. Just being a above guys like Jake Ottinger and Swayman. It's just incredible feat for Wall. I mean, you look at him, he's making huge saves. He's standing in the net like a brick wall, like everyone keeps saying. This guy is the future of Toronto. I think he's the future number one. I know it's the situation of we don't want to get our hopes up. We've been in this kind of situation before where we've seen maybe Freddie Anderson. We've seen Garrett Sparks, if anyone remembers, come in, steal the show in his first game and kind of falter. But Joseph Wall is a different case. I mean, at his age, he has been around, I think he's 25 now or just in between so when you look at this guy he has the experience he's dominated at every level we've seen him last year in the playoffs he looked outstanding and there's so many people just speaking highly of him you see jake ottinger speak out saying that joseph wall looks incredible he said when he talked to his friends in dallas he kept saying wall was going to be the real deal in toronto you look at max domey saying that he is the next carry price so just all this excitement coming around wall his composure he's a guy that doesn't get frustrated like i've said in a recent video he went to switzerland and walked through the mountains in the offseason to get his mind off things. This guy's incredible. I'm super excited for him. And I think we do get Sam Stone off starts, but I think from here on out that Joseph Wall is the number one and it's undisputed. Yeah, and we kind of predicted this going into the season. We never expected him to, to go off like this, but I mean, I, I Mitch now rec uh, 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 says his name in interviews as Brick. He doesn't say Wall. He doesn't say Joe. He calls him Brick. So I just think that was amazing. And another crazy stat that I thought it's just a weird goldie stat that just is in my head is that he hasn't let a goal in in the first or third period 
this season, all the goals he's let in have been in the second period. So the times of the game where you need a goaltender the most, he hasn't let a goal in yet. This guy is playing phenomenal, and I think this guy is definitely going to be the number one going forward. Like you said, I still think they're going to give Sammy a chance, get him in there, see how he is. I know that he's working hard to get back to where he was, but right now, I think you just ride with the hot hand in Joseph Wall, and I think it's just going to work out. It just seems like this team is playing way better in front of Wall. I don't know if it's his composure in the net or the, the way what it is in the locker room. We don't know that side of things, but it does seem like Joseph Wall is going to be the number one going forward, and I'm really excited to see it. Yeah, that's the big thing. You kind of seen him come in for a relief for Sam Sonoff, and then he got back-to-back -back starts. I think it's at this point that Keith trusts this guy. And a big thing, you look at Joseph Wall, his incredible start, just his incredible saves, goals saved above average, everything you look at with this guy. And this is on a team where a lot of fans are saying the Leafs need to upgrade the defense. Just say the Leafs went out there, made a giant splash, picked up two guys just to bolster the defense, make their defensive edge so much better. Just picture how good Wall would play. We've seen him rob Jason Robertson. We've seen him rob Kucherov, Hagel. This guy looks outstanding. I just, I can't stop thinking about how this guy looks in mid-season form when the Leafs build more defense, build more chemistry, and are in a playoff hunt. I think this is the type of guy we've seen Bobovsky steal series from Toronto last year. We've seen Bobovsky steal series from uh, Tampa one year as well. I think Joseph Wall is in this caliber, and I think he's going to be a main thing that pushes Toronto to the Stanley Cup. Yeah, I definitely have to agree with you. This guy's a great goaltender. I've expressed how big of a fan I've been of Joseph Wall ever since he's been in the AHL. He tore up the AHL. Now he's proven that he can do it in the NHL as well. So it's really exciting to see a goaltender come in and start, see, start to steal the show. It's happened a number of times in the league. Remember the Hamburglar, Andrew Hammond, he came in, played on Real 2, and there's just a lot of these nice goalie stories, and we're in the midst of one right now. Joseph Wall is playing on Real, and we're really excited to see what happens with him going forward. But we're going to get into everybody's favorite topic here, and that is comment of the day and the comment of the day today goes to john and this might be my favorite comment of the day of all time mark he says if the leafs win you'll see 65 year old guys climbing lampposts turning over cars and setting things on fire in celebration i think this is an all-time comment mark because he's not wrong there will be like you remember what it was like when the raptors won can you just imagine what it's going to be like when the leafs win one Oh, I've always said, if the Leafs do make the finals, if it goes to Game 7, I might not be able to get tickets, but I will be in Toronto. If this does happen, I will be live streaming. I'll be showing you every 65-year-old, every 80-year-old with the walkers, flipping things, burning things. It almost looked like the Canucks riots, but in a good way. But I would be just, I'd be one of them jumping everything i'd be crazy so yeah mark if you told me you're going up i'll be right alongside you i wouldn't want to miss that out because that's just an unbelievable unbelievable experience you don't want to miss but if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to go down below hit that like button hit that subscribe button we're trying to hit 2,000 subscribers so we really appreciate it if you went down hit that subscribe button and comment down below your thoughts on everything we talked about today joseph wall's historic run uh minton getting sent back down and lagson getting called up let us know you might be featured on the next comment of the day but if you enjoy the Leafs, make sure to check this video out popping up on your screen right now. I've been KC alongside my co-host Mark Pye. Keep your stick on the ice.